most important editing tool at our disposal as photographers, in my opinion, is the crop. And it is so underutilized. And I know that from personal experience, the more time and effort I've put into really trying to perfect my crop and really try and hone in on developing that skill, the more engaging my photos have become and the more that people have been interested in photos that I take. And I know that some people in this community say that cropping is blasphemy and that everything should be done in camera. But these are the same people that probably thought that Ansel Adams didn't dodge and burn his photos. But we all know that's not true. And we know that talking about the crop can be quite dry. So I'm going to try my best to make this both educational and entertaining by focusing on the principles that you can start implementing into your own photography to then build upon with your creativity. There's no hard, fast rules here. These are just ideas for you to then start spiraling in your head and to go and take into whatever direction that you want to to help benefit your photography. So let's get started with what is the crop? And this may seem quite basic, but it's super important that we understand what we're all talking about here to then build upon it. So, what is the crop tool and how is it useful? Thankfully, it's not purely about taking a beautiful landscape image that you have taken and crucifying it by smashing it into a four x five format so you can post it on Instagram and bow and pray to the algorithm gods. What it actually is, is it's about putting edges around your image and creating a frame for the viewer to observe the scene that you have photographed. And more importantly, it's about guiding the viewer's eye to what you want them to see within your photograph. This could be a really interesting composition. This could be a thought-provoking juxtaposition, or it could just be a funny scene that you think other people would enjoy looking at. And so there's two stages in this process, and everything I say should be applied to both of them, but there's in-camera and then there's in-post. And so in camera, you're very time pressured. You need to snap the photo at the perfect time to get the image that you have envisaged in your head. However, in post, whilst we don't have that time pressure, we are more restricted into what we can actually do because we've obviously got the, the file that we're working with, but it's also more definitive because this is the last step in the kind of editing process before you then show this image to potentially an audience. There are three common mistakes with cropping. There's cropping too tight, which is where the subject feels really squished in and we lose a wider sense of story because we don't know what else is going on around the subject. We don't understand the context at which this photograph was taken. But then we also have the opposite problem where we've shot too wide and there's too much context and we lose the subject and we're adding in additional environment that doesn't add to the photo, doesn't add to the scene, and the viewer doesn't know what to look at. And therefore, the photo then becomes a little bit uninteresting. You look at it quickly and you're like, I don't really get it, and you move on. So the art is knowing how much to include and what to not include. Straddling these two ideas is using the wrong aspect ratio. And we're gonna dive into this properly in a second, but it's so important to choose an aspect ratio that complements the story, that helps exaggerate and emphasize the story that you're trying to tell, rather than just what format did I shoot it in or am I gonna make it look good on Instagram? And before we go into the principles, a huge shout out to Anwar for buying this beautiful oak flat white, which I've got in a lovely bike riders cup. So thank you very much. One of the most important things that I think that we need to learn to do as photographers is to crop hard. What is the most interesting part of your whole image? And how can I emphasize that with the right crop and the right aspect ratio? So here's an example. Let's say I've taken a normal wide landscape photo, right? I may have the two most interesting things here and here. And that means that we've got lots of excess space off to the sides. And yes, this could be adding to the story, but chances are it's not. And so it's important for us to, as photographers, to say, okay, this isn't useful information to the viewer. This isn't adding anything to the story. Let's just crop around the most interesting things. And I do this all the time. I have shot some of my favorite photos in the wrong uh, orientation, whether that be portrait or landscape. Then I've just used, a very, I've just got rid of a lot of the megapixels, the excess megapixels. And I found that I've been super, super happy with the, the images as a result. And so as well as cropping hard, I think there's something known as the aspect ratio pull that we need to be aware of. And so we want to choose an aspect ratio that draws the eye to the subject, draws the eye through the frame and feels like it's flowing seamlessly. 
right? And so if you've got a lot of things in your frame that are across the frame, you want to be using a landscape orientation. And so the reason for that is that the longest side of your frame is the direction at which the eye will move through the frame. And on top of that, the bigger the ratio. So let's say you've got a super wide uh, landscape image that isn't very tall. Because that ratio is so great, your eye is going to be drawn straight through that photo much faster than if it was, say, like a four by five, just slightly rectangular. You may have heard other people talking about don't let the eye escape, and dead space allows the eye to escape. So what do we mean by this? Every part of your frame needs to have some sort of visual interest so that the eye keeps looking around the frame, and therefore the whole scene feels like it's of interest. You can go from point to point to point to point to point and keep on looking and keep on being interested in what's happening. And if whilst the viewer is looking at the image and it gets to a point where there is no visual interest, nothing interesting, the viewer will think, oh, I have looked at everything within this photo and will be interested in something else. And this can happen in art galleries, this can happen on Instagram, this can happen anywhere that someone is looking at your photos. The goal is to have something that is visually interesting all around the frame so the eye keeps on going from one place to the other. But it's also important to balance the frame, which is my next point. So it's important when we're creating a balanced frame that we don't have too much visual weighting on one side or another. And so how do we balance this? Well, if we have something, let's say we've got a frame here, and we've got a subject, our primary subject, the number one thing we want people to look at, at the bottom of the frame. It's useful to have something perhaps at the top of the frame to then balance out the visual interest. The same can be said for the left and the right. And I always like to think about it on a personal perspective. And whether this is right or wrong, I don't know. I always like to think about the diagonal axes. So if something is in the bottom, what would be right for you, I would then want to play something in the top left. So that way, the eye can go from side to side and there are things for it to look at. And the more different things you can place and weigh up visually, the more interest you can have spread across your frame. And this limits dead space, which then means that the eye is then less able to escape. And so to get really good at cropping, it takes a lot of time and a lot of effort to really visualize how the image is actually coming across with this visual weighting. And the best way to practice this, in my opinion, is to test yourself over and over and over again. And I've found that there are two ways that I really like to see whether my crop is actually doing what I think it's doing. Because as a photographer, I know that the photo that I've taken, I know what I was thinking. I know what I was trying to capture. I know what I want the subject to be. But that doesn't necessarily mean that the eye is drawn to that subject. And so I want to test whether that is actually true. And so the two different techniques that I use are the squinting and the zoom out. Both of these things allow you to really see the major elements within your frame. If you squint, your vision becomes blurry and therefore you are only able to see the major elements of contrast. And if you zoom out and create a wide border, make the picture really small within your frame, you are then also seeing just the major elements. You're losing the details. You are seeing which things your eye is actually drawn to. And so whilst I'm doing this, I like to make little micro movements. Let's say I feel like the image is slightly too weighted to the right. It's like, okay, well maybe if I shift my frame further right, it then brings everything in the frame further left, which then makes it feel more visually weighted. So Lightroom gives us mad flexibility that I absolutely love. So I like to right click and create virtual copies. This allows me to have the same edits and then create a different version with a different aspect ratio, with a different crop. And I'm able to create multiple variations of exactly the same photo with the same edits, which then means that I'm able to choose out of, let's say, the five different versions that I've done, which is my favorite photo. And this is something that is so, so underrated because I hate it when you make an adjustment, make an adjustment, you go, actually, it was better seven adjustments ago. This allows you to keep on almost like saving a copy and moving on. And on top of this, another tool that I love is when you're in the crop tool, if you hit the O key, you can then cycle through different 
compositional patterns, which then mean that if you're aware of what they do, you can then have completely new compositions within your crop. You can then discover things that you didn't initially envisage, you didn't initially see, but this crop shows you how the lines are interacting, how this swirl is actually leading the eye through the frame. And it is so much fun because immediately you could think, oh, this photo is amazing, rule of thirds, let's say. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, actually the golden ratio is amazing if I just crop it in a little bit. Or there's this one that I really like with slices in at the side and you realize that this diagonal line is actually super strong. I find all of these absolutely beautiful and I love using them. I hope that that was interesting. That video was actually quite challenging to put together because there are so many different elements to discuss and I would absolutely love it if you have any thoughts on anything I've said or anything that I've missed, you scribble them down below. And uh, yeah, obviously if you've got this far and you found this useful in some way, I would really appreciate a like and if you're feeling generous, a lot of subscription. And so, yeah, until next time, Peace.